Welcome everybody to Zlatan's Fight Picks. Today we're going to be going over UFC Vegas Pavlovich versus Blades this Saturday, April 22nd. We'll go over the main cards. We'll go start off with the prelims and work our way up to the main event. So um, I've tried to make this a little more conclusive uh, with my picks where even on the board, uh, there's there's a couple of fifty there's one fifty fifty, but I try to make it uh, more conclusive in certain picks. It's, even with the wild card situation, I'm just trying to narrow that down. Even though it, it's hard and hard to actually explain um, certain times when you want to bet certain ways, not because you think the fight there's going to win or lose, but because of the odds. So I try to make it a little simpler for some people that were having a hard time grasping that. So, especially with the, the parlay. So I try to narrow it down, even though, you know, I've, I've made a couple small notes, but I try to narrow it down a little bit to make it a little simpler. But nevertheless, let's start. First fight in the prelims, Brady Heistad versus Bartigal. Batgarel Dana, Heidstad, 5'8", 71 inch reach, 7 wins, 2 losses, 23 years old. Dana, 5'7", 70 inch reach, 12 wins, 4 losses, 33 years old. 10 year age gap. Um, uh, in this case, I don't think Dana is over the hill. I think he's in his prime. Heidstad is coming into his prime. Ten, I don't think the 10 years is going to make a difference. Um, Highstead wrestler, heavy kind of guy. Um, I find that if he can't get to the ground, he'll keep trying and trying until he gets tired and then he gets weaker and weaker and takes a lot of punishment on the ground, takes a lot of punishment on the feet. Uh, in this case, I think Dana is a much better striker, so he's not going to want to keep it on the feet. He's going to have to take it to the ground. Um, and I think Dana's got a pretty good takedown defense. He's been working with uh, Henry Cejudo. I think his takedown defense is getting even better. I don't think Heistad's going to have an easy time taking him down. Uh, I, he might take him down. I think Dana's going to be able to get up. Overall, I think Heistad's just going to wear himself out trying to take Dana down. And if he stays on the feet, I think he's going to get knocked out. So uh, pick his Dana on this one. Uh, next fight. Uh, Priscilla Cochera versus Karin Silva. Cochera, um, Priscilla Cochera, 5'7", 65 inch reach, 12 wins, 4 losses, 34 years old. Karin Silva, 5'5", 67 inch reach, 15 wins, 4 losses, 29 years old. There is a 5 age year gauge gap. It shouldn't be too much of a, too big of a deal. Uh, Cochera is taller, at least by 2 inches. Um, I, I, but her her reach is not as as far so you know um i mean depends how you i guess how they measure at different times but they're roughly the same size kachura is going to be taller for sure uh kachura she's a girl who definitely will fight for your money so if you ever bet on her you know she's going to go down working as hard as she can fighting as hard as she can very tough girl has problems with submissions uh, she's weak on the ground. I imagine she's working on it, right? So I think her defense is going to be better and better. But she's primarily a striker. I think she wants to be on the feet. She wants to strike. She wants to come forward. She's a zombie girl because she absorbs a lot of punishment. She wants to move forward. She doesn't care if you hit her. She just wants to hit you back. She's got a lot of power and she's knocked people out. Karine Silva, a relative newcomer to this uh, UFC. So she hasn't fought a lot of top echelon competition, but she is a ground specialist, submission specialist. This is exactly the type of person Kachuera usually is susceptible to. Now it all depends is Kareen Silva absorb the punishment that's going to be dished out and take Kachuera to the ground. If she can do that, she's going to win the fight. I see this fight going where Kachuera is going to be really landing a lot of shots. Silva has shown she could take them. I think she's going to take a lot of punishment to get to Kachuera. But once she gets Kachuera on the ground, I think she's going she's gonna to end up submitting her. This is going to be a nail biter just because I think Kachuera has a lot of power, going to come forward, going to hit Silva a few times before Silva gets her to the ground. 
Uh, she might have a hard time getting her to the ground. I don't think Silva's got the best takedowns. But when she's on the ground, she's very dangerous. So I'm picking Silva to win this. She should win it. Cachoeira, she, she's strong where Cachoeira is weak. Just a matter of taking enough punishment and hopefully not standing on the feet too long, taking Cachoeira down. Next fight, Francis Marshall versus William Gomez. Francis Marshall, 5'9", 72 inch reach, 7 wins, 0 losses, 24 years old. William Gomez, 6 feet tall, 73 inch reach, 11 wins, 2 losses, 25 years old. You know, um, I was going back and forth on this one. I've got this one as like the closest fight that I could think of pretty much. Um, there's one other fight that's as close. I, I kind of was, I thought... Marshall, then I thought Gomez, then I thought, you know, I was looking at it and I thought, you know, my pick, the, the underdog is Gomez and I'm going to go with the underdog on this one. Uh, Will, Francis Marshall, very strong kid, built like a brick, very fast, good takedowns. I mean, you wonder why I wouldn't pick him, but <laughs> uh, like I was going back and forth on it. Uh, can take a lot of punishment. William Gomez can take some punishment. He's a good striker. He's much, he's taller. You know, he's quite a bit taller. I think he's going to have the, of course, he's going to have the reach advantage. He only has one inch reach advantage, but he's like a lot taller. So he's going to have the kicking advantage. He's a really good striker. He's a good technical striker. He's very accurate. And that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Gomez. Just because I think he can keep him on the outside. Uh, I, I think Francis Marshall is tough enough and fast enough to land punches for sure but also the last fight i saw gomez fight he fought against a guy that was really good on the ground and he definitely won the ground game um uh you realize how strong gomez is even though he's got a really tall skinny frame he looks very strong and he was able to outpower the person who was supposed to be a very good grappler so i liked how he looked in that one i think that that's, that shows that even though he's really tall and lanky, he's very powerful. Marshall is very powerful. I think that Gomez is deceptively strong. So if that's the case and Marshall can't take him to the ground and if he, and if uh, Gomez can get back up, a lot of ifs. But I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a mostly striking battle. Gomez is going to be the more technical striker. So I'm going to go with Gomez. He is the underdog. Final pick is going to be Gomez very low on the confidence scale you'll see on the on the parlay or and, and uh, on the legs how low i got him next fight muhammad uzman versus junior tafa muhammad uzman six foot two 79 inch reach nine wins two losses 34 years old junior tafa six foot three don't even know the reach didn't have it <laughs> so he's new um four wins zero losses 26 years old um Junior Tafa, four wins in mixed martial arts. He was in uh, a kickboxing, what was that? Um, uh, it was a K1. Um, uh, what was he in? And anyways, he, he was in uh, the kickboxing realm for quite a while and he was very good and he's got great strikes. So he's very good, very good striker, can take punishment. He's been hit hard before, mind you, you know, most of that experience is with bigger gloves but the guy has good chin very strong very powerful striker good technical striker um francis mar uh francis sorry uh mohammed uzman uh uzman's brother six foot two seven you know what he didn't look that great even the last fight he won he won with a knockout he can obviously take a punch he's very powerful he's very stout um he's reasonably fast i mean he was fast enough to counter punch uh, the person he knocked out last time i can't remember his name uh, but he was the guy he knocked out was a uh, light heavyweight fighting in heavyweight um muhammad uzman i think is uh, overrated uh junior tafa even though he doesn't have a lot of experience i think he's gonna it's gonna be a technical striking battle i don't think muhammad uzman's gonna knock him out i think tafa is gonna do very well i uh, kind of looking forward to this fight uh yeah so the pick is going to be uh junior tafa you know not super high confidence but you know decent you'll see where he's in the legs of the parlay he's 
more, you know, better than some, worse than others, right? <laughs> but I think I'm picking Tafa. I think his experience in uh, the K1 and the striking is going gonna, is gonna to show in this fight. As long as he doesn't take too much punishment. Um, I think he's got a strong chin and I think sometimes he just comes in with his hands down and just kind of throws punches. I hope that's not the case. I mean, he still can get caught. These are small gloves and yeah, it's a little bit different. But he's 4-0 right now so far, but he hasn't really fought anybody great either. The people he's fought are, you know, are like tomato cans. They got a 4-0 record. It doesn't mean anything, but he is a great striker. He's coming from K1, so I think he's going to take it. And Usman, I think, is just overrated, going on his brother's name. Um, next fight, Carol Rosa versus Norma Dumont. Uh, Carol Rosa, 5'5", five 67 five, inch reach, 16 wins, 4 losses, 28 years old. Norma Dumont, 5'7", five 67 seven, inch reach, 8 wins, 2 losses, 32 years old. I'm thinking um, the, the the heights might be off. You know, looking at, looking at these girls, I think they're very, very close to the same size, the same reach, but I think they're also the same size. Uh, Carol Rosa, you know, is a ground, really good on the ground, uh, decent takedowns, pretty good striker. Overall, she's a very good, She was. she's, she's a decent middle of the road kind of fighter. Um, she is moving up because she was at 135. Now she's fighting at 145. Norma Dumont is a 145er. She's only lost against the best in the division as well. Um, this is going to be a closer fight than I thought. At first, I thought Norma Dumont, you know, but looking at the girls and how they're built, I thought Norma Dumont was a little bigger, but she's not. They're virtually the same size. But Norma Dumont is going to be the better striker. I think this is going to be a mostly striking battle. Norma Dumont's got good takedown defense. I have think that Rosa's going to have a hard time taking Dumont down. It's going to be mostly on the feet. Um, people have taken Dumont down. Actually, Chase Son was the only one to do it, but Chase Son's got just such a physical ability. She's so tall. And uh, anyways, I don't think Rosa's going to have the same success. Um, I, I think it's going to be a close fight. I'm picking Dumont to win. Dumont for the victory on this one. I think it's, she's going to be a little bit better of a striker than Rosa, and I think that's where she's going to win it. Uh, we'll see what happens. Next fight, Rani Yaya versus Montel Jackson. Rani Yaya, 5'6", 67-inch reach, 28 wins, 10 losses, 38 years old. Montel Jackson, 5'10", 75-and-a-half-inch reach, 12 wins, 2 losses, 30 years old. Eight-year difference, Rani Yaya, 38 years old. This guy's at the end of his career. He's a great fighter. He's a jiu-jitsu nerd. He's on, he wants to be on the ground. He'll throw punches with you, but his the whole idea is to get you on the ground. Montel Jackson might be too well-rounded. He's good on the ground, good on the feet, good everywhere. Huge, huge uh, height advantage, massive reach advantage. He's going to piece Ronnie Aya up uh, on the outside. Ronnie Aya should lose this fight. He is heavily, heavily, he, he's a big underdog. Honestly, Rani Yaya has submitted many people and quickly too. So this guy has the ability to submit anyone. So he's always dangerous, even though Montel Jackson should win this. Because of the odds, I mean, I've got Montel Jackson high up. I mean, you might not even want to bet this fight because of the odds. Or uh, if you if you did, if you, well, I mean, if, you, if you're going to take the bet, I mean, uh, as a single bet, Ronnie Yaya would be the better option just because the payout's going to be huge. I mean, and there he has a method to victory. He could catch Montel Jackson. I don't think he's going to do it. But there is an opportunity for him to win this because, I mean, he's 38 years old. But at the end of the day, if he's on the ground, he's live <laughs> at any time. This is how this guy wins. And he has caught a lot of people. I mean, depending how you want to play it, even if you put him in a parlay where you had Montel Jackson and have one parlay where he put Yaya and watch your uh, your uh, returns multiply, you know, if you want to take that chance. And uh, that's that's how you got to weigh your options. I've got it marked on his board as a wild card just because the, the, the odds are so crazy. But Jackson's the pick. You might not even want to bet it just because at the end of it, depending on what you want to bet and how much you want to bet. Again, not financial advice, bet at your own risk. But at, 
and uh, only what you can lose. But at the end of it, if you, it's just not might not be worth it. So, and and it might be worth it just to put them in one crazy parlay or uh, one bet for Yaya. And I mean, if it hits, it's going to pay huge. So Montel Jackson's going to be the pick. High degree of confidence. Definitely, Yaya is always live for a submission. Uh, the feature prelim, Ricky Glenn versus Christo, Christos Giagos. Ricky Glenn, six foot tall, 70 and a half inch reach, 22 wins, six losses, 34 years old. Uh, Chris Giagos, five foot 10, 71 and a half inch reach, 19 wins, 10 losses, 33 years old. Hey, almost the same, almost the same height. Um, R Ricky Glenn just got a little bit of a height, a little more lankier. Christian Giagos, very stout and stocky, very powerful very powerful great on the ground really strong punches he he just gasses is the problem you know after the first round you'll see him start to taper off until the third round he gets worse and worse as the time as things go on he kind of reminds me of um what was that fighter last week tj brown <laughs> you know um very powerful looks great everything looks fantastic and somehow he ends up losing a lot. Uh, it just, well, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, looks very powerful, very quick, very good on the ground, very good striker. He looks like a world beater, like TJ Brown. And you put up against a guy who can take those shots and take them into the later rounds, and then they're done. It's, it's crazy. So I, that's what I'm picking on this one. Ricky Glenn, very durable, you know, he, very very unassuming when you look at him physically but he's tall he's lanky he's good on the ground he's much better on the ground he's really improved huge he's a good striker i think he's going to be able to take him into the the deeper uh further rounds and he's going to win this it's going to be a close fight but rookie glenn for the victory over christian giagos who i think will fade as the fight goes on main card Jeremiah Wells versus Matthew Semmelsberger. Jeremiah Wells, five foot nine, seventy-four inch reach, eleven wins, two losses, one draw, thirty-six years old. Matthew Semmelsberger, six foot one, seventy-five inch reach, eleven wins, four losses, thirty years old. Uh, very close in age. Wells is going to be. He's still doing very well. He doesn't show him that he's getting really old, but he's at that age where he's going to start to teeter. Uh, Matthew Semmelsberger, pretty consistent, middle of the road. Uh, welterweight he's gonna have a large not a reach advantage is only one inch but he's much taller than this Jeremiah Wells and this is where I have a problem is Jeremiah Wells very explosive hard to keep on the ground it's good ground and pound if you're down there um, definitely wants to keep it on the feet Semmelsberger wants to keep it on the feet um, he can go on the ground but Simmelsberger is going to, going to want to strike. Both of them are going to want to strike. This is a pick em kind of fight. I went with Wells. I, saw, I, was, I realized, you know, I saw the height difference. And then, man, if Simmelsberger can keep him at distance uh, and, and keep this fight going, you know, he could pull this off. So it's a real, real close fight. So I've got it far, far, far down on the, on the, on the picks. Um, I'm just thinking though, Semmelsberger might not be able to win. Wells is just on a terror lately. He's been winning a lot of fights, a lot of knockouts, a lot of, you know, lot, just to, he's got a lot of explosiveness. I find Semmelsberger, he's, a, he, he's got good timing, but he's not fast. So I find him a little on the slow side. He's going to have the reach advantage. Jeremiah is going to have the speed advantage. And that's where I think... Jeremiah Wells might be able to catch Semmelsberger, but he's a hard guy to knock out. I don't think anyone's knocked out Semmelsberger. Um, so do I see a knockout? I don't know if I see a complete knockout as much as Wells knocking him down and winning rounds. Um, it might be enough. I think Wells is going to have the speed advantage. Like I said, uh, Semmelsberger is going to have to keep him at the end of his punches. It's going to be a close fight. I'm going to go with Wells. Honestly, very low confidence. Wells is the, uh, well, they're both underdogs technically. They're minus 110 for both of them. Gonna pick Wells, low confidence. 
Semmelsberger does have a path to victory. If Wells can't be fast enough to tag him, Semmelsberger, very tough, hard to drop, long reach. You know, I mean, this can go either way, but going to go with Wells, low confidence. Uh, Lasmin Lucindo versus Brogan Walker. Lasmin Lucindo, 5'3", 66-inch reach, 13 wins, 5 losses, 21 years old. Brogan Walker, 5'4", 67-inch reach, 8 wins, 3 losses, 34 years old. 13-year difference in age. That's huge. Um, I think that, I mean, 21 years old, she's got a lot of youthful energy. She's going to be able to push the pace. Brogan Walker always comes in good shape. She's still not past her prime. She's never been a fantastic fighter. She's been always okay. Lasmin Lucindo, she's a pretty good fighter. I always find that she comes in a much smaller than most of the other girls. In this case, she's only one inch smaller, one inch less reach advantage. I don't think she's at a huge disadvantage, which plays into her favor because she's a good striker and she's good on the ground. She's very well-rounded. Brogan Walker, very well-rounded as well. But I think overall, the trajectory of their careers is Lucindo is on her way up and Brogan Walker's on her way down. I don't think she's ever been stellar anyway. Uh, I think she's very well-rounded, very consistent, very much like a journeyman. I think this fight is going to be pretty clear. Lucindo's going to win this. She's going to, uh, she might not be able to submit Brogan Walker, but I think she's going to grind her out and uh, it's going to be a dominant performance, but I don't think she's going to finish Walker. Walker is a veteran. She's going to be able to stick it out. Takes a lot of punishment. I think Lucinda's going to win. High degree of confidence. Even though, because it's the women's fights, I got them at the lower end of my legs for any parlay. But if you're going to bet, um, there's a high degree of confidence. It's Lucinda, for all the women, she's going to be my highest degree of confidence to win this. Uh, next fight, Bobby Green versus Jared Gordon. Flash Gordon. Uh, Bobby Green's five foot ten, seventy one inch reach, twenty nine wins, fourteen losses, thirty six years old. Jared Gordon, five foot nine, sixty eight inch reach, nineteen wins, six losses, thirty four years old. Very close in height. Uh, Bobby Green's going to have a little bit of a uh, reach advantage, and in this case, it's going to be critical because Bobby Green is an excellent striker. He is an excellent striker. Jared Gordon is a pretty good striker. Bobby Green's an excellent striker, and he's a hard guy to hit. Very elusive. Great movement, rolls with punches. Hey, but you know what? He can take he can take a lot of punches, even though he had a really bad knockout last time against uh, what was his name? Um, oh, he was winning the fight too. He was winning the fight. He was out striking him, and he finally got tagged. And he got it was it was yeah it was. I mean, you wonder how that will affect his chin because he does rely on getting hit, but most of the times it's him deflecting punches. He's very elusive, but he's 36 years old. He's at his end of his career. He's a lot of punishment on his body and his and his uh, head, technically. And with the last bad punch, I mean, he's going to show wear and tear at some point. I think Jared Gordon doesn't have the talent to deal with Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown's pretty good on the ground, pretty good takedown defense. Jared Gordon does not win this fight anywhere. So apart from something very lucky, Bobby Green is going to dominate this fight. He's going to win this fight. High degree of confidence. He's the first one in my parlay. Most confident. Mind you, that doesn't mean anything because last week, the first guy in my parlay got knocked out. So there you go. <laughs> but high degree of confidence for Bobby Green. Should win this fight fairly handily. Excellent striker, going to keep it on the ground. I mean, going to keep it on the feet. I don't think he's going to be able to be taken on the ground. Um, uh, Co-main event, Brad Tavares versus Bruno Silva. Brad Tavares, six foot one, seventy-one, four inch reach, 19 wins, eight losses, 35 years old. Bruno Silva, six feet tall, 74 inch reach, 22 wins, eight losses, 33 years old. You know, Brad Tavares is one of those guys that he's always there. He's 35 years old. He's not past his prime. He's been going to wars and taking an immense amount of punishment. So at some point, you're wondering if that's going to affect him. But you know what? I haven't seen it affect him yet. He's a good striker. He's got good takedown defense. He's definitely not trying to take anyone down. He's he, But he's got good takedown defense, good striker, very tough guy. Bruno Silva, he's like... Uh, he, he's like Brad Tavares. I mean, they're, they're very similar in height and stature and the way they fight. 
Uh, the, he's getting up there in age. He got a bad knockout against Mersh, Mershart. Um, surprising knockout against Mershart. And I mean, you, the former champ in the middleweight division couldn't knock him out. And then Mershart knocked him out with this kind of this lazy left hook. I mean, it didn't even look like it was, it was accurate. It was, it was technical, but it wasn't fast. And he basically almost knocked Silva out completely. And then he jumped on him and he pounded him. Very surprised at that, how that happened. Um, again, it's one of those things. When does your chin go? Because Bruno Silva has been, has a reputation for taking a lot of punishment. That one was a kind of a weird loss where I'm normally high on Silva to get stuff done and to fight through it and to out tough somebody and to throw punches and keep coming. That was a really weird fight. Um, I haven't seen that in Brad Tavares. I think Brad Tavares is going to win this. I think Brad Tavares is faster. Bruno Silva is not very fast. He does have an awkward way of landing his punches, but he's not very fast. He's, he's powerful, but it's kind of misleading because the punches don't seem to like to come in very fast. I'm going to go with Brad Tavares. I have fairly, fair, fair, you know, not super high confidence, but confident that he's going to win this. Bruno Silva looks like he's on his way out. Uh, Brad Tavares definitely is not, you know, an up and comer, but he's, he's there. He's pretty solid. I think he's going to win this fight. Finally, main event, Sergey Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. Sergey Pavlovich, six foot four, 84 inch reach, 17 wins, one loss, 30 years old. Curtis Blades, six foot four, 80 inch reach, 17 wins, three losses, 34 years old. I mean, Pavlovich has never fought a wrestler. Never fought a really good wrestler. Curtis Blades is an excellent wrestler. He can out wrestle everybody. Great takedowns. Everything's good. This Curtis Blades should win this fight, but Pavlovich hasn't really been tested, so you don't know he might be able to resist some of the takedowns. Curtis Blades has had problems with very big, powerful men, and I mean not just strikers, but just well, powerful strikers. He tends to, if he's going to lose, he's going to get knocked out. You need a guy who can knock, who hit him hard enough to knock him out and to pound him. Also, he has a hard time with guys with a long reach that are powerful. And uh, the, the former champ, uh, Nganu, showed that. He kept, when he fought Blades both times, <clears throat> he has an 84-inch reach, just like Pavlovich. Kept him far, <clears throat> had a uppercut always ready to go from distance. You know, if, if uh, Curtis Blades was coming in to shoot, he had plenty of warning to throw that uppercut. Mind you, Curtis Blades has tried to work on that. He's actually really improved his striking. And that's something he was doing conscientiously because he was very one-dimensional. And guys like Ngannou were waiting for him to come at him and throw an uppercut as he's trying to shoot. And if you're dealing with somebody very powerful, they're going to catch you. So Blades has been working on his striking. Now that's good and that's good because that's basically him striking long enough to be able to get close enough to you to take you down. So that could be the case in this case. But Pavlovich does have a clear path to victory. Stay a little further out and catch him. Now Pavlovich has got fast hands. So if anyone's going to catch him, Pavlovich can catch him. Also, Pavlovich is very powerful. He's built powerful on top. When Blades fought Volkov, Volkov a much taller guy, he's mostly powerful below like in his legs right in a very kind of skinny on top and when he got blades got um volkov down he was able to keep him down but he had a very hard time keeping him down he was totally gassed by the end of the fight but volkov is not that powerful from the top and what nganu showed in the first fight with blades is just because blades gets on top of you if you're strong enough physically on top your arms and your upper body you can get an underhook and force him off your uh, force him off you and that's what Nganu did like he fell on the ground he would just get an underhook and he just forced blades off of him so um I think blades is also heavier since then I think he put on some extra poundage and muscle because of that because he would be harder to take off but Going back to the path of victory, Pavlovich looks like he's very powerful. He might be able to get up 
And that's the thing. As long as Blades is not lying on you for multiple round, like for multiple minutes, you could still get back up and win that round. And Blades can't win that round. Uh, Rosenstruck almost did that, but he wasn't very powerful on top. I, th I think he just his upper body is a good striker, and he couldn't get Blades off fast enough to win the rounds. Even though he were, there were certain times he was winning the fight with strikes. He caught him quite a few times. Very powerful strike. But Blades would be able to get him on the ground somehow and then, you know, basically lie on him and hit him a couple times and win the fight. So there is a path to victory. And we've never seen Pavlovich tested like this. So if Pavlovich is strong enough to get him up, to get up fast enough, if Blades does take him down, because Blades will take him down. He's not going to be never take him down. He's just got to be able to get up. And if you can get up in 30 seconds or less, he's going to win this fight. But at the end of the day, I think Pavlovich's path to victory is knocking Blades down. As the longer the fight goes, it's going to be in Blades' favor. And Pavlovich does have the hand speed to knock Blades down and knock him out. Especially if Blades is going to be coming in, if he can time him. So this is like a 50-50 fight. I've got it as a 50-50. I think they both have a clear path to victory. You're, you're, uh, you know, I'm thinking Blades, but you know what? Pavlovich has got, he's not been tested. In, what, in which case he might lose or he actually might win. But he's the up and comer. He's coming out of nowhere. He's beating everybody. Blades, I mean, he's kind of floundering up on the top echelon of the game here. So it's a 50-50. I've got it set up as a 50 50 but i'm putting these guys in the front and and then you'll see when i turn it to the board is i've got it at the back there but either way i've got um what i what i'm going to do for myself if i had to bet i would bet the underdog i bet sergey pavlovich as a single bet but as far as the parlays i would be one parlay with pavlovich i'd have one parlay with curtis blades it's a 50 50 and I put it in the front just because of the way I've set up this parlay. There's a lot more decisiveness to it. So let's go to the board. The board. Let's see what's going on with the board here. All right. This is how I would do it. Again, not financial advice. Take what you can from this board see what you agree with by all means if you have any comments leave them in the comments curious to see what everyone else thinks now this is the 50 50 i put here for pavlovich and blades pavlovich is the underdog i put it i, I would actually put this up here and i would pick one parlay with pavlovich in it and i pick one parlay with blades in it that's how i would do it but i mean you don't have to do anything I do. I'm just I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. And then you can do what's best for you. Uh, Bobby Green, 60%. He's my highest confidence. Jackson, he's a very high confidence. He's a minus 600. It might not be worth to put him in a parlay. It, it might not be worth to bet him at all. Just because he is so out overpriced. Uh, you can have possibly as a wild card in a bet or a parlay where you have your normal bet and then you have one with Yaya in it just because of the multiple effect that will be. And that's a truly like gamble. I mean, that depends how degenerated I, I'm going to do it. So, but that's just me. Um, but he's definitely not the pick, but he is such a big underdog and he does have a path to victory in, in catching anyone with a submission because he's really good. This is what he's done for the last 20 years, you know, submitting people. So he's a jujitsu nerd. So there you go. Uh, next one, Dana. I'm picking Dana to win. 58%. It goes in down in order. Tavares to win. Should beat um, Silva. Uh, Wells. Oh, oh, there is there is a mistake there. Wells should be down here. What did I have over there? 
I had, um, I was supposed to, I, like I said, I had gone back and forth and I put them up there. Then I said, nah, this is not going to work, especially after looking at Semmelsberger and stuff. Where, who was he replacing? Wait get one second. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, fuck, yeah. Glenn, Glenn should be up there. Sorry. Hey. Glenn. Do this. For some reason, it was not. Sorry. So we got Glenn. And he's at minus 145. Minus. There we go. That's more like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That that's more that's more like it. So after Tavares, we got Glenn at minus one forty five. You know, fair fairly high degree of confidence. Tafa, he's only at minus one fifteen, but I think he's going to win this fight. And then we go to the ladies. Ladies, Lucinda, minus 340. I mean, that's that's a little overpriced, but she's definitely going to win. Uh, next one, minus two, 200. Silva she has a definite path to victory, you know, as long as she can take uh, weather the onslaught from Quechuera. Um, Dumont, uh, again, I think she should win. But uh, Rosa is not a joke, and she is definitely, you know what, like I said, uh, she's moving up, but she's not smaller which where I would have put most of the advantage. But Dumont should be the better striker. Then I got Wells, just because of how close this will be with Semmelsberger. They both got a pack to victory. I think Wells is going to pull this off. Um, yeah, I think he's faster. I think he's going to win this. That's going to be the pick. And of course, 50 plus, very close fight. I had gone back from Gomez to Marshall. Um, I picking Gomez. You could pick Marshall in this case or pick both. I mean, it is a 50 plus for a reason. So you can go with, with uh, I, did, I wanted to make it a little simpler, but in reality, you know what? If you, if you decided to go with Marshall here, right? He is the favorite. Right? Um, is that like minus 250 or something? I mean, you could go and swap those guys out. I'm going to go with Gomez, um, plus the fact that he's plus 175. I mean, that's a really good, that, that's just a good a good bet as well. Uh, either I mean, you could just, or not, don't bet either one of them, or have one with Gomez and one without Gomez. I mean, in which case, might as well have one with Gomez, one with Marshall. You know, either way, you're going to get some kind of payout. But um, increase on your parlay. But as far as the bet goes, I would bet on Gomez. Definitely uh, more risk to reward than Marshall as a single bet. And as a parlay, you can have a Gomez or you can have one a parlay with Gomez and one parlay with Marshall. But that's going to be a 50 plus. It's going to be a very good fight. I'm still picking Gomez. You know, if you if you pick Marshall, it wouldn't be a crazy bet, except for the fact of the odds. The odds just suck with Marshall. So overall, I'm picking Gomez, but you can pick Marshall if you wanted. Not for me, but I, I'm going to go with Gomez. But again, you can go either way. It there is no wrong way to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there is a wrong way. Unfortunately, what I want to say is nobody knows the right way to do it. All right. Again, that was uh, there is uh, bet online fifty percent deposit match winnings. Um, if you want, is a link is in the description. If you wanted to go bet online, it's got the most amount of props out there. Um, also, what's that? Uh, if you want, if you like the video, like please. Uh, it would help with the algorithm. Subscribe if you want to get notified. And uh, yeah, there's also a buy me a coffee. If you like the content, I like coffee. Ah, thank you very much, everybody.
Great to uh, see you guys again, and we will do the recap next week. Hopefully, this is going to be a good week, and we'll see what happens. See you later.